Hi, and welcome to Heart Basics 2. This is our second one. I don't know how many of these I'm going to do, but after doing the first one, um, I decided that I sh there's some things I should mention. First of all, um, some harps, most harps, good harps, should have a tipping point where they should just balance. Probably because my harp is on a stool of its own. It doesn't really have that. It takes the whole stool back with it. So my harp just leans, I don't even feel, on my shoulder. Um, so your better harps will have that. Um, second thing uh, is related to how we play and why I'm starting with just one finger. Our, our hands, when we relax our hand, looks something like this. Doesn't matter which one it is. Should look something like this. So that when we are teaching our hands to close, we're teaching our fingers to come into this position when we close, whether we've got, you can see that this is semi-relaxed and now it's relaxed. So when we begin with something like red, red, black, we're just getting our hands accustomed to this. What happens if we don't? Well, what very often happens is our fingers begin to come like this. And you can see people who play harp, who play like this. And what it does is it allows them to keep their fingers really close to the strings so that they can move quickly. So that seems like a really good idea, but that tension doesn't get released. And eventually it travels up their arms to their backs, their necks, things like that. Speaking of tension, doing exercises before and after playing the harp is a really good idea. And I left several of my strings untuned this morning. Ah, uh, how often do I tune? Well, if I had been playing regularly, I would probably tune once every 10 days or two weeks, or before a performance or a rehearsal, certainly. But I wanted to show you that, well, why do I tune that often or that frequently? Um, so my C is good. Um, I'm going back down. B is B flat for me, it's okay. That's fine. Um, G sharp is okay. And the A is a bit high. Could tune that one down just a tad. So what am I? Yeah, that, that's adequate. I'm using my tuning to make sure that I'm closing my hand properly. I'm relaxing it. I'm just using the index finger, which is one of the most used fingers for all harpists and harpers. What's the difference between a harpist and a harper? Well, not much. The harpist tends to be the professional with the 47-string pedal harp. 
that weighs some 30 kilos. Yeah, they, they seem to be okay. So when you're tuning your harp, how so often do you need to tune your harp? If you haven't played in a while, which I haven't, then tuning your harp every other day is a really good thing to do. Once you and your harp, once, once you find the, the point where you're t playing daily and your harp is staying in tune every other day, every week, check. And when you find that it basically it's in tune all the time, then only change if there's a huge, oops, better not put that in there, it will rattle, because um, it does. So it will, um, if there's a change in the weather or you go to a different place or the, your um, home is very humid or dry because of laundry and showers and other things that the heating has come on, you're using a fireplace, those sorts of things. So I've been tuning the harp, my harp now, pretty much for almost three weeks, two or three weeks. And I'm in a very good position now for really thinking of exactly what I'm doing, which doesn't look like very much, does it? I'm closing my hand properly, relaxing, oops, hitting the same string. Is that the right? Do, didn't close my hand properly. So I can use that sort of thing, and I'm doing it technically looking at the camera, reminding myself how my hand should look thinking about, okay, where's that next, what am I missing, that one, because where our hands are accustomed to jumping up, the spacing is going to be the same, should be the same. What part of your fingers are you playing with? Technically, it's the very side of your finger. And that's going to be for all of those fingers and then this part of the thumb. Fingernails, they're going to have to go soon. They're going to be catching the strings and that's going to create noise and it's going to create wear and tear on the strings. The wire strung harps, not the metal strings, the wire wrapped strings in the bass section, but the wire strung harps. I think they do use this, the nails, but the gut and nylon and other, the um, what are they? The other strings like that are microfiber. Um, strings don't. How often do strings break? Ah, that's another point for tuning your heart. When you have a broken string and you're bringing a new string into tune, you'll do that a lot. And as you bring it into tune, the uh, strings around it will be taking a lot of the pressure that's on the soundboard 
on them. So the string that has broken and been replaced and the strings next to it will probably need more frequent tuning. So using, no, I'm assuming that my missed better the second time I began missing right around my middle C and at the moment, I'm not in C, so let me put my harp in C. Again, same thing with the, the left. On my right hand probably starts missing right around here because basically I've trained it. For being up here, not for being down below. Something similar happens with my left hand when I get around to here. It worked this time, maybe because I'm thinking about it so hard. Um, else to pay attention to. That extra noise. When you are going and beginning and learning and thinking about closing that hand and thinking, you may think, I want to just play music, just shut up about all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But you don't want those extra noises either and you don't want the tension. So, when you're in the process of training yourself and training yourself, ex okay, my hands are gonna go like this or you're training yourself in a new piece. You don't want to train in extra sounds. Because if you do, it's going to bother your music and eventually it will bother you. Because it's, it's just frustrating. So, the next time I bring this, we, we do uh, Heart Basics 3. We're going to talk about using two fingers, thumb and index finger. Because there's, you can see when I close that I'm bringing the thumb down. And that's where the thumb goes. And it doesn't matter whether you're or you place both of them, or you place the thumb. And you can hear when they're just side by side here, it's not the most beautiful sound in the world. It's a discord. That's called two, a second. This is a third, you go up one. part of the C chord. So next time we're going to consider two fingers. And if you have questions, please ask. Um, I'll try and get to the questions soon. So give yourself the chance to figure out 
am I getting all my strings? difference in sound. Don't worry. Can you play up here? Yes. Can you play down here, which you can't really see it. Is that different? There's supposed to be a difference. Um, one thing about sharpening levers that I'm going to say right now, because this is sort of a technical thing. Um, if I were taking my heart to be, I think it's called realigned, they'd probably put all new strings on and they would pay attention to the placement of the levers. And my camera is not going to show this to you, but there is actually places for the screws that hold the levers on to be unscrewed, and these sharpening levers can be adjusted slightly. And that was what would mean that when I'm tuning my harp, the string would be, should be, regardless of whether the lever is up or down and should be in tune without being sort of on a little below or just a little above being in tune. I've considered this and I have decided that I like my system and that I'm not going to change where the sharp adjust them in any way. Um, because if you're putting all new strings on, it's going to take a while before the strings reach their best point, and then the sharpening levers may not be in the right place anymore. So, that's that. Another thing I'm going to mention here is, don't forget doing fun things with your one finger and relaxing your hand. And here at the top, you know, we think about our relaxed hand position. There really isn't room for my hand to fit. There's so much that just working with one finger can do and setting yourself right so that you don't get yourself crooked. Crooked. How crooked are you? Are you sitting? Am I sitting straight? Are my feet flat on the floor? No, they weren't. Um, can I play both my C's? That's not a C, that was a B. And relax my hands. Just, there's so much to think about, especially in the beginning. Okay. Take care. Next time we do two fingers. <laughs>